there, welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. We're going to do kind of a fun episode. Remember I told you earlier that the dude from Columbia said you should do a, like a, he called it crappy wine. I'm not going to call it crappy wine because I don't know yet. But we're going to call it bottom shelf wines. You go in a grocery store that's set up with the cheapest wines on the bottom, and the next shelf gets a little higher, and higher, higher until you get to top shelf and it's supposed to be the most expensive. In the store that I, my department, in the store I work at, the top dollar ones are at eye level, then it goes there, then it goes down to the bottom. So the bottom shelf wines are ones that, you know, they're everyday wines. They're wines that, they're uh, labels that people are familiar with. The, and I, you know, I thought it'd be a great, I thought it was a great idea to go through these wines and try them. It's been a long time since I've tried any of these wines, so I'm kind of excited to see what they're all about. So let's get started right away. We've got quite a few to go through. This is the, uh, does it have a vintage? <laughs> oh, come on, really? This can't be non-vintage. Maybe it is. Um, oh, anyway, this is the Rex Goliath, the giant 47-pound rooster Cabernet Sauvignon. I do not see a, uh, a vintage on this, but... We're not going to worry about that. We call it the cheap chicken at the store. This rolls in at $9 and, or $8.50. So all these wines are $9 and under. Okay, we're going to get this stuff out of the way so we can show you the wine. So the cheap chicken. There you go. I want to thank uh, Chris for uh, helping me set up the lighting. Uh, I would have never known where to put them, but he's got them set up here and there. And yeah. We'll see how it turns out. He also set up my camera for a better exposure. I got a new tripod. I'm all stoked. <laughs> We're going about this. We're moving right along. Okay, so the cheap chicken, $8.50. This is a very popular wine at the store. Let's see what we get. On the nose. Yeah, it smells like cherries. Cherries and a little bit of red flower component coming through. Maybe a touch of licorice, which I like. You all know I like licorice, hopefully by now. Let's see what we get on the palate. Not bad. I'm serious. I get currants and cherries. A little bit of tobacco. It's not, not doesn't have a, you know, heavy duty weight on the palate. We wouldn't expect that for eight dollars and fifty cents. But this is very decent Cabernet Sauvignon for eight fifty. Um, a little bit of tobacco coming through. Like I said, it's a little thin. I don't get a lot of fakiness on this. You know, a lot of these wine companies can do additives and different things to wine to get it to where they want it to be. Uh, there might be just a touch of that on this, but I think it's a pretty good cab. Nothing wrong with this. You can have this with a steak. Um, just a really nice, easy to drink cab. Kind of simple, but nice uh, currant and cherry notes with a little bit of tobacco on the back side. Decent finish, really, really decent finish. I'm gonna have to go C plus, B minus on that for the money. Now remember, this is QPR, quality to price ratio, not bad for $8.50. Way to go cheap chicken, let's move on. Wow, that's pretty nice. I mean, serious. C plus, hedging towards B minus. Wow, crazy. All right, this is the um, Meridian Vineyards Cabernet Sauvignon. Once again, uh, I do not see a vintage. So these are all non-vintage cabs. Oh, that's weird. I didn't realize that until I started looking. Isn't that? That is so strange. Um, seven bucks. I didn't realize these were non-vintage. There you go. So what they do is they take their juice, they take different vintages, and they can uh, blend them together to get up the uh, to get what they're talking about. So this is seven dollars. We sell quite a bit of Meridian. Just saying. You know, a lot of this is price driven, but you know, I I think that even 
uh, for my customers that are coming in to get a, an inexpensive cab like these, I still want them to be good. So I'm curious, uh, color, I didn't talk about the color on this, but the color on this one is uh, uh, fairly light. The cheap, cheap chicken was a little bit darker than that. It's set up very well. well. This bar isn't really big enough to do this many wines, really. A lot lighter on the nose. I, I get a little bit of a touch of funk. Not a lot going on. I get a little blend of um, currants and red licorice. Let's see what we get on the palate. Much simpler, pretty basic cab. Again, there's nothing wrong with it, but compared to the cheap chicken, this one is really, really lightweight. Um, that funk comes through just a little bit, which is not, I don't have a problem with a, just a touch of funk. But this is a, a lot brighter, um, very simple, very lightweight on the palate. I'm getting some cherry and currant notes coming through, but that's about it. It's seven bucks, guys. There's nothing wrong with this cab. Just a little bit light. I'd rather spend another buck fifty and go with the cheap chicken. I think that's a, a good way to go. Uh, I'm gonna have to go C minus on this just because it's very lightweight, very simple, very. Uh, but it's not terrible. It's just nothing really going on there. Yeah. But you know, if you were cooking, you wanted to splash a little bit in your stew. I don't even think it has enough weight for stew though for cooking. Anyway, let's move on to the. I'm going to go by price here, guys, just to be fair. Now, this is a brand that's been, well, they've all been around for a long time. But um, I remember the first time uh, being introduced to Turning Leaf years ago. Uh, Ron worked for Sound. He uh, gave me some samples, you know. I didn't, yeah. Beginning of my career, I had nothing to go on. Uh, let's see what we get on the nose. Oh, better show you the label. This is, again, non-vintage. Uh, Turning Leaf Cabernet Sauvignon, California. This rolls in at eight dollars. So I'm, it's starting to make sense to me. These are all non-vintage. Uh, they can blend. So you know, there you go. I wonder if Turning Leaf does a reserve or anything. Well, I don't know. Let's see what we get on the nose. Has an interesting, uh, ooh, a little bit of menthol coming through. Get in a cherry currant notes again with the, just a hint, a hint of menthol. And just a touch of licorice. So this has a lot more going on in the nose. A little bit darker. This would remind me a little bit more of the cheap chicken and the color. There you go. Let's see what we get on the palate. Light tannins, these all have light tannins, I forgot to mention that. Um, sweet light tannins. Uh, this is again one dimensional, uh, but it's good. I mean, it, it's, you know, what can I say? There's nothing wrong with this cap, once again. Uh, but very light on the tannins. I get a lot of um, a touch of brown sugar coming through um, on the currants. Just soft, easy to drink, not funky. Just once again, if you bought this, any of these, took them home and drank them, you wouldn't like be disappointed. I mean, for eight bucks, seven bucks, eight fifty. This is just really, it, it's a lot more fruit forward, a little bit on the sweet side. Some some of you might not like that. Uh, some of you might. Just depends on what you're looking for in your Cabernet Sauvignon. I look at my calves. I want, of course, you know, taking a step up. You want something a little bit more guts to it. But again, you're not spending that much money. You take Turning Leaf home, you quaff it, you have it with a bunch of friends. Nobody's going to complain about it, uh, but it is a little bit sweet. And it has nothing to go on, but just that sweet kind of current, very light again on the palate. I'm going to go C minus C on that. I think it's a little better than Meridian, has a little bit more weight on the palate. Just really soft, easy to drink Cabernet for eight bucks. I mean, 
all of these, I wouldn't have a problem keeping them on the shelf and saying, hey, you know, if you don't want too much on your cab, go Meridian. If you want a little bit more sweet tannins, go there. If you want a little more complexity, believe it or not, $8.50, go cheap chicken. Let's move on. This is the uh, Barefoot Cabernet Sauvignon. You're a lot of you, of all these labels, I'm sure you're very familiar with. Again, non-vintage, as far as I can tell, which I think is really weird. I wasn't expecting that. $9.00. Barefoot, most awarded wine brand. It's an interesting statement. See that? Ah, there you go. A little rinse here. So, so far I haven't like, oh, you know, yeah, spit it out sort of thing. That's good. I didn't know what to expect. So you can't call these, uh, you know, we call them bottom shelf wines, but... You know, I'm, like I said, I wouldn't have a problem selling any of these to anybody who just doesn't want to spend a lot of money, just wants something that's really good. Let's see what we get on the nose with the barefoot. Has a little bit of a cedar component coming through, which I find quite interesting. Yeah, cedar on top of, it's, it's very challenged, very challenged. Again, the color on this one, a little darker than the cheap chicken and the turning leaf. Now, Barefoot has got to be one of those labels. I sell a ton of Barefoot wines, and the 1.5s and the 750s. It's just a really, really popular brand. A little perfumey on the nose, like, a, like current soap with a little bit of cedar thrown in. Let's see what we get on the pellet. A little more structure to this one has a little grip on the back side which I find quite interesting for nine bucks a little bit of grip a little bit of spice coming through nice balance current notes coming in there um, again it's not super complex we don't expect that for nine bucks but it's pretty darn good the sand not bad for nine bucks You know, I'm, I'm actually, I am actually impressed with this Barefoot wine. I don't get a lot of fakiness on it, a lot of makeup. I have good grip on the tannins. Current notes, fairly smooth across the palate. It's not sweet. It is it's definitely on the sweeter side of tannins. But it's not, you know, I could easily pop and pour this for a group of people coming over to my house and be proud of it. I would be proud of this wine serving at my table. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, touch of tobacco on the back side. Not too shabby. I'm going to go straight up B- minus on that wine. Now remember, these grades are based on QPR, quality to price ratio. I think for 9 bucks, this is showing awesome quality for the price. You know, it's like the, like the kid in school who's, you know, he's not the brightest guy in the, in the school, not the brightest guy in the class, but he's working really hard, working really hard, and the teacher appreciates the effort. So she might give him a little bit better grade. Maybe he's doing C minus work, but she gives him a B minus because of the effort he's putting in. She understands, he or she, the teacher, understands the challenge a student has faced. I understand this is $9, but it's a B minus $9 wine. You see where I'm coming from on that? So let's move on. Very, very well-known brand, Woodbridge by Robert Mondavi, Cabernet Sauvignon. This one is vintage, it's 2017. And it is, uh, rolls in at $9. Very familiar label to a lot of you. Uh, Robert Mondavi was just, you know, big, had a lot to do with the wine world and getting wine off its feet in Napa Valley. He is a very good marketer. Of course, he's long gone, but, uh, and Mondavi was sold, I think, to Constellation Brands, maybe? I'm positive about that. Anyway, let's see what we get on the nose. Very, very pot, barefoot, all of these, are, you should recognize these labels. So this has a little bit of that kind of uh, uh, overripe current on the nose. I'm getting a little bit of a wood component coming through, like dried wood. And overripe, 
currants. You know, they, you know, they're almost rotten. They're not quite rotten. Yeah, but it's not strong. It's, that's what I'm getting. Let's see what we get on the palate. Again, this one has a little grip on the back side. That overripe current notes come through, not in a big way. I think it's balanced. Uh, I think it's uh, definitely one that a lot of people might like. I say might because you'd really have to like ripe currants. I'm surprised that the, the barefoot showed a little more complexity than the wood bridge. Let's see what we get here. Tiny hit of, of red flower notes coming through. Uh, a little bit of tobacco on the back side. I don't like this as much as the barefoot. I think it's a little better than the rest. But it, it's, you know, just pretty one dimensional with that right current flavors coming through. A little bit of tobacco. Um, a little bit of grip on the back side, but not nearly like the barefoot. So I went uh, B minus on the barefoot, I think. I'm going to go C plus, B minus. And then on the Rex, yeah. C plus B minus, same as the Rex Goliath. I think uh, this might fall in that same category. I think I would even go head towards C plus, except that I think the Rex this uh, has more structure to it than the Rex Goliath. So I'm going to go C plus B minus on that as well. So there you go. Bottom shelf wines, none of them were terrible. I think the Meridian was the worst of the bunch. As far as that goes, I mean, not the worst. I mean, it was the lowest grade of all of them. Uh, still, you know, something I wouldn't feel bad about selling to somebody, mostly for cooking, though, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, the turnip, I'm really impressed with the Barefoot, the Rex Glide, and the Woodbridge. Um, yeah, good wines. Thanks for the comments, guys. I, I, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Mike, for commenting. That means a lot to me. Um, thanks for watching, of course. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, especially my friends. If you're, if you know me, if you walk in the store and we talk, and you, you know, you enjoy talking to me, enjoy getting my advice on wine, and you're watching a couple of these, just, 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 just hit the subscribe button, please, please. I appreciate it if you do that. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.